I highly recommend you stop whatever you're doing and go watch Why Does Nobody Remember Me in This World. Uh, the first episode finally released, and it was honestly just as good, if not slightly better, than I was expecting. I read the synopsis for this one, and it just gave me a very interesting vibe. And the kind of TLDR, if you want a little interesting hook to go say, well, should I watch this one? Basically, you have a character, you know, you get, get a little lore dump about five races, Big Great War, Prophet Sid, you know, great hero from back in the day, all's well that ends well, pretty much era of peace. Something happens, and for some reason, only the MC is aware something is happening, which, you know, for a while throughout the episode, I'm questioning, did he get warped to an alternate reality? Was things rewound? Was it rewritten? I'm kind of of the belief things were rewritten because everything, like, characters that he knows are still active, but, like, the entire course of history has been changed, and currently there is no hero Sid. Most likely that's going to be our boy, but we'll talk about that later. But the idea that instinctively there are still these things that feel like people want to act a certain way like they did before. At one point, um, our boy's like, hey, I'm going to borrow this car. And he just met these guys, mind you. And instinctively, a person who used to be his friend, who currently thinks he's known this guy for less than a day, throws him the keys and he's like, wait, why, why would I give him the keys? So something has happened and history has been rewritten. And for some reason, only our boy is under the assumption that this is happening, and we start and end the episode with this, like, angel-demon hybrid combo saying, please release me, and something interesting is about to happen. Legitimately one of the more fascinating premieres, I think, out of this summer anime season, and I highly recommend this one. Now, of course, I have full live reactions over on Patreon. If you want to see my full and good thought to any of these episodes, it's going to be over there exclusively, so... I first want to talk about the whole Sid dynamic. I think most people are probably going to come out of the assumption that even if Sid was a different person before, Sid's guaranteed going to be our boy now because no one really knows what he looks like. Just he's a he's a historical kind of like he's a story to tell people about why things happened and we were safe. We're currently in a situation where humanity has been pushed into literal hiding versus where we start with them thriving. So, potentially, demons or something are responsible for whatever rewrite happened, a curse or something, but it's very clear that at least for right now, our boy's going to be the hero. But the thing about it is, is I'm not sure if we're going to go the route that by the time the story's over, he was always Sid. Because you could make the argument, are we dealing with time travel or something, and like, this is the past, but I don't think that would work because... The characters he's seeing are still the characters he was interacting with before. So it does feel like a rewrite that, you know, something's happening. Like, maybe it is going to be a weird mixture of time travel shenanigans. But by the time everything's said and done, will the world go back to the way it was at the start? And, you know, he'll know that he was Sid. It's, it's possible. But at the end of the day, it is so fascinating to watch, like, the first 8 to 10 minutes of this episode. It's pretty chill. It's nothing extraordinary. But if you read the synopsis, you could pretty easily tell why they were directing it the way they were. They were getting us kind of accustomed that, you know, the world's kind of at peace. Things are fine, yet our boy's training as if he has to go to the pits of hell and the deepest parts of war. And the idea that, you know, when it all happens, it's actually very Steinsgate-like in terms of how things start breaking down. I very much liked it. It's like Chaos Child, Steinsgate in that area. It was so interesting because... Like, this girl is pretty much about to, like, unleash her entire feelings of love, it felt like. And as things start breaking down, no one, like, everyone's looking at him like he's a crazy man in the middle of the street. Because they're like, you know, she's pretty much flustered that he's using her first name. And he's like, what the hell's going on? Insert battlefield. And it's such a cool way to just, like, hook you in. Because if, for whatever reason, you never read the synopsis or watched a single trailer, and, you know, all you had to go off of was, was why does nobody remember me? You're probably not expecting that the world's going to shatter quite vis like visually. Maybe like people would just actually forget he existed or something. And it hits you in a very intelligent way, I found. I think the production of this show is, honestly, it doesn't leave much to be desired. It's, it's a good-looking show. It has a fun art direction. And the taste of action we got, I mean, that demon thing was quite large and in charge. And it didn't look like a 3D mess. He basically has a gun blade with different types of bullets in order to do different types of like, oh, this bullet acts like a monster breath attack, or this acts like this type of attack. A lot of cool things clearly at play with all of that, but the biggest hook is, you know, the identity crisis this guy's going to go through, because you have to think about it, right? 
When we watch an anime or we play a video game or whatever with a story like this, it's very easy for us to be like, okay, it's very clear that things have changed. But imagine this happened to you in your real world. Like, everyone's at one point in their life had at least one dream that was so vivid that you probably were convinced while the dream was going on that it was real. And you have to imagine, like, what it must feel like, and of course, him believing things have changed, but there would be that bit of an identity crisis because he's currently in a completely different environment. Is he crazy? Is he a loony? Like, what is going on in that conflicting tug and pull? Now, most likely, for most if not all the show going forward, he will believe that things have changed. But in the back of your mind, you have to believe a character like him would be having a bit of an internal freakout of why the hell do I, like, I know their names, but they, everything, they're, like, everyone thinks he's crazy. The fortunate thing is that he is hitting personal spots that are allowing people to, to kind of raise an eyebrow. He knew two of their names. He knew places and stuff. So there was that, the instinctive, hey, I'm going to borrow the car. Sure, wait, why would I give you the keys? The biggest was actually when he calls out to the leader of, you know, the resistance or whatever they're calling themselves. And he starts going over some personal details about, like, why are you dressed as a boy? Like, you want to do this or that? And very clearly, that hitter is like, how would he know that? I probably never have shared that with every, like, anyone. So there is clearly a lot that we can enjoy here. There is a lot that is going to be interesting about exploring on a personal character level. You know, he walked up, you know, at the start of this episode being like, why the hell would I free you? And I'm like, yeah, you probably want to keep someone who's chained like that tied up. I was thinking that he was going to free that and then shit was going to get weird. Not that he would then, you know, unleash Excalibur, teleport there, and now I'm like, no, he probably does need to release her. That's really interesting. Overall, though, this was definitely one of the shows I was really, really anticipating. I thought it had one of the most unique premises that I read through when I was going over live chart uh, about a month back or something when I first started seeing this one. And I'd say overall, it lived up to expectations. It has a good production value. I like the music. I like the voice actors. I like the look and feel and structure. I'm going to be here for this one. And hopefully people are going to check this one out. I know weekends can get a little busy, but I actually think this might be one of the most unique shows airing this season. But hey, that's just my feelings. Let me know what you're thinking down below. Um, whether you had plans to check out episode one or maybe you checked it out because of this video. What are you thinking? And are you going to check out episode two next week? Do let me know down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. Alrighty, so today we have Achiel, Jaren Ubonks, Justin Bernard, Clay Samuel, Hayden, Cody Namiro, and we also have Thomas Smith. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. You all have a good one.